I can't think of another topic that causes more controversy than the topic of iodine. Regardless, we're gonna dive straight in with both feet. One of the most controversial aspects of iodine has to do with dosing. Most people, if they've done any amount of research, will come to the conclusion that iodine is essential for life. This point should not be controversial. What is controversial though is dosing. And when it comes to dosing, we have three basic camps or schools of thought. The first camp recognizes that iodine is essential, but suggests that we get enough from sources such as food and cosmetics so that we don't need to supplement with any additional iodine. The second camp also recognizes that iodine is essential and required for life, but suggests that the RDA recommended daily allowance of iodine intake is sufficient for optimal health. This is the camp I fall into, by the way, which is why I recommend that most people take daily iodine in the form of supplements. And finally, the third camp also recognizes that iodine is essential, but suggests that high doses of iodine are required and necessary for optimal thyroid health and optimal health in general. This third camp also believes that high dose iodine provides special therapeutic benefits to people who are suffering from thyroid problems or other problems such as prostate issues and breast or glandular issues. What I want to do today is explain why this third camp, the one that recommends using high dose iodine, is the wrong one. And to do that, I'm going to go through some of their most common arguments. Argument number one, high dose iodine is safe because we know that the Japanese population consumes far more than the RDA in the United States and they do not experience more thyroid problems as a result. And I'll admit, I even fell for this argument when I first started practicing and treating thyroid patients. After all, it makes a lot of sense. If you can point to a population or group of people who are doing something different than the rest of the world and they have better health outcomes, doesn't it make sense to try and mimic whatever they're doing? Of course it does, which is why we have a lot of data and research on populations of people who live in these so-called blue zones. These are specific areas in the world in which the average life expectancy is much higher than normal. But in the case of the Japanese population and their iodine intake, the information presented here is misleading and incorrect. If you look around on the internet, you will see that proponents of high dose iodine suggest that the average daily intake of iodine in the Japanese population is around 12.5 milligrams per day. Put into perspective, this is roughly 41 times the RDA that exists in the United States. If this is correct, then it very strongly suggests that there's something special or beneficial about the Japanese population and their lifestyle which imparts some benefit on their thyroid gland or thyroid function. And maybe this benefit is related to their intake of iodine. But, and this is a big but, the Japanese do not consume an average of 12.5 milligrams of iodine per day. In fact, that number is much lower. Data reported by the Japanese government suggests that their estimated daily iodine intake is somewhere between one and three milligrams of iodine per day. And their recommended daily iodine intake range is around 130 micrograms per day, which matches the range that we recommend here in the West. This one to three milligram dose range is much lower than the often cited 12.5 milligram range that the high dose iodine proponents usually cite. In fact, it's anywhere from 76% to 92% lower than that cited number. This is important because it blows a huge hole in one of the best arguments for the safety of high dose iodine. We know from many research studies that as iodine intake increases in a population, so too does the number of thyroid conditions. This has been played out in numerous population studies as various countries undergo iodine prophylaxis programs. And these increases in iodine problems are experienced in a U-shaped pattern. In other words, thyroid problems increase as your dose goes below 130 micrograms of iodine per day. They then flatten with normal doses of iodine intake between 130 and 299 micrograms of iodine per day. And again, start to increase as your daily dose of iodine exceeds 299 micrograms per day. Having said all of this, I don't think that you can make a solid argument that taking 12.5 milligrams of iodine is safe. But I do think you can probably suggest that taking doses between one and three milligrams per day is likely not going to cause any major problems. And this range of iodine is roughly three to nine times higher than the recommended daily allowance here in the United States. If you are somebody who wants to take a higher dose of iodine for any reason, then it would be better to stick to this one to three milligram range 
as opposed to the 12.5 milligram range. Argument number two, high dose iodine helps to detoxify out harmful compounds. There may be some truth to this one, so let me explain. Proponents of high dose iodine suggest that taking higher doses of iodine may help the body naturally excrete harmful compounds known as halogens. If you go all the way back to high school chemistry and the periodic table of elements, you will find a column of elements called the halogens. These elements all sit on the far right side of the table in the periodic table of elements and include elements such as fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. All of these elements share a similar electron configuration, which makes them highly reactive. And it just so happens that because these elements are very similar to iodine in terms of how they behave, they may actually compete for binding on thyroid hormones with iodine. If this occurs, then they may replace iodine on the thyroid hormone compound, which will render that thyroid hormone functionally inactive. This may be a reason why some thyroid patients continue to experience low thyroid symptoms despite having normal thyroid lab tests. It's not that these people don't have enough thyroid hormones, it's just that the thyroid hormones that they do have are not functioning optimally. High dose iodine is said to be effective in treating this particular condition because it allows iodine to compete for binding once again back on those thyroid hormones, thereby kicking off those halogens and reactivating that thyroid hormone once again. This may sound like mumbo jumbo, but there's actually some science that supports this idea. If we look at dermatology texts, we find a condition known as halogenoderma. This is a well-documented skin condition that occurs when the body is introduced to halogens. When this occurs, the body will attempt to eliminate those halogens through the skin, which results in acne-like eruptions. And both bromine and iodine have both been known to cause this condition. When iodine causes it, we call it iododerma. When bromine causes it, we call it bromoderma. One of the potential side effects of taking iodine is acne. But when put into context, it's very likely that iodine is not causing a true acne, but instead many of the people who experience acne when taking iodine are likely experiencing the elimination of these halogens through the skin. So there may be some legitimacy to this idea and may be the reason why some people who take high doses of iodine see an almost instant boost to thyroid function. But the question is, do you really have to take a high dose of iodine to obtain this benefit? The answer to this is no. Even if iodine is competing with halogens for binding on thyroid hormones, high doses of iodine are not required. You can still obtain this benefit by taking even low doses of iodine as long as the iodine content is higher than the doses of bromine or chlorine inside of the body. Consistent daily low doses of iodine are sufficient for this competition to occur. In addition, you can also augment the release of these halogens by taking salt, which contains a natural form of chloride. So while this is a true phenomenon, it's not an argument that high dose iodine is required. Argument number three, high dose iodine does not cause autoimmune thyroid disease. As I mentioned previously, it's very clear that there is an association between iodine intake and autoimmune thyroid disease. This has been played out in multiple studies which have followed large populations of people as countries have introduced iodine into their population and they all show the same thing. As iodine intake increases in a population, so too does autoimmune thyroid disease as described in this quote. Epidemiological data indicate that a higher incidence of autoimmune thyroid disease is observed in people with a sufficient dietary iodine intake than in those with subclinical iodine deficiency. In addition, we also see other thyroid problems increase as iodine intake increases, including the risk of thyroid cancer. Quote, in countries previously defined as iodine deficient regions, iodine prophylaxis has increased the prevalence of papillary thyroid cancer, end quote. To be clear, correlation does not equal causation, but all signs point to the fact that increasing iodine intake causes more thyroid problems, not less. I have not seen a single study to date which shows that increasing iodine doses results in a decrease in autoimmune thyroid disease. But there are plenty of other studies which show that reducing iodine intake may improve thyroid function. So it seems the data all point in one direction. Having said all of this, is there any benefit to taking high dose iodine? And the answer is yes, I do think there is. I will freely admit that I have seen some thyroid patients take high doses of iodine and come back online when nothing else seemed to work. But I have also seen many cases of thyroid patients 
who take excessively high doses of iodine and accidentally trigger autoimmune thyroid diseases like Graves' disease or Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And the problem with this is that these diseases tend to stick around forever. The question in my mind is not whether or not high dose iodine provides some benefit, but whether or not the benefit that it provides is worth the risk. And my opinion is that the risk is not worth the reward. The reason is simple. There are plenty of natural tools and treatments that are available to thyroid patients that they can use to help themselves feel better. It may be easier to take one capsule of high dose iodine than it is to completely change your diet, but you will find that changing your diet provides much better benefits to your overall health as well as your thyroid health and does not come at the risk of triggering autoimmune thyroid disease. With all the treatments, hormones, supplements, natural remedies, dietary changes, lifestyle changes, etc. that are available to thyroid patients, I just don't see high dose iodine as a good option for most people. It's far safer to stick to physiologic RDA doses of iodine intake in the range of 150 to 300 micrograms per day and avoid any unnecessary risk to your thyroid gland. And by the way, if you are looking for natural ways to help support your thyroid, I would recommend checking out this video next. It highlights some of the most powerful thyroid boosting supplements out there, which can be used in place of high dose iodine.